So I'm here in the water cube in Stockholm with, with Julian. Um, so Julian, if you hold your badge up. Yeah. Uh, so, um, well, we've been talking this morning. You're, you're running the water hackathon in London this October. That's right, yeah. Um, with uh, Emmanuel Etier, who's uh, in the computer science department at University College London. Great. I, I was really interested first in understanding what, what's your day job? Okay, um, so I'm uh, in the Department of Civil Environmental and Geomatic Engineering at University College London. Uh, I teach and do research mostly on water management. Um, and the, so what that means for a day job is basically mathematical modeling of how we can better manage water. Uh, we try to combine hydrology, engineering, economics, social and institutional factors put those together into mathematical equations and try to predict or optimize how water is managed now and in the future. That's, that's basically the, the idea behind the day job. So what kind of, I mean we're here at Stockholm World Water Week, but there's lots of organizations, quite very specialist organizations in water and sanitation. How do you interact with them? Yeah, we... Uh, or we do you? Well, we try to, we try to. Um, so the, the day job involves research and teaching, uh, but um, you know we're interested in water management and these are actually the people who do water management worldwide, so uh, it's a great opportunity for academics like me to be here uh, and try to see what's really going on in the policy arena, what's going on in the ground. There's all sorts of people from uh, water managers from different countries. Uh, so this is where we get our motivation and this is where we learn what's relevant and then we try to build the decision analysis tools that cater for these peoples. Yeah. So we're trying to build the tools that these folks are going to want to use in the next couple of years. Great. Now, have you, I, I've, I was reading a really great article a few months ago uh, by Paolo Antonelli, and she's the curative designer at MoMA in New York. And okay. she was writing about visualizations and the de visualization design, so designing info infographics mm -hmm. as this the next big thing in design. It's really the potential now that we have all these data feeds yeah. to create really interesting new kinds of communication is, is, is extraordinary. And I wondered. I presume the kind of thing, the kind of data that you are crunching, mm -hmm. could be taken by talented people and turned into some really interesting visualizations. Yes, yes, uh, it would be great. Um, I think there's there's a whole range of activities people like that could be engaged in. Um, I think a lot of it uh, could be channeled into displaying real time data and, and uh, data on demand and consumption of water. Um, I work specifically on management and planning, um, so that's a little bit, uh, you know, not as intuitive uh, in terms of what to display or what not to display, and I think it's, that's why people like me need to develop long-term relationships with these design and graphics visualization people, yeah. so we can display in an appealing way, you know, the results of our analysis. Of course, I, I get the, the danger of data is that it can be manipulated and visualized. The, the data visualized in certain ways can send out a very, the wrong message. And yeah, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, you know, the way, especially now with the internet, ways of communicating and, uh, and presenting reality are all competing. And so, sure, you may make some graphic, but if someone criticizes that or people say that that's not appropriate way to look at it, it'll die down over time. So I'm not too worried. You know, you can trick people a couple of days, but over long term, that's not going to work. So there's, there's no real gimmicks in this field. You've got to just show uh, things effectively, and that's, that's what will go on over long term. Right. Yeah. Well, Julian, thanks. Thanks. No worries.